Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here one more time, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for Strength Tech Workstations. We have an FRX Floyd Rose. So this is the latest piece of machinery from uh, Floyd Rose. Now this guitar was sent out from Austin, Texas and Trevor is a aerospace guy from what I understand and uh, very talented but he's not really set up for the guitar thing and he recognized that so he sent this up for me to do the install on it. It's not that it's super tricky, it's just that, you know, you got to be set up for this particular job. So I'm going to take this apart and kind of explain as I go the challenges that uh, he was coming up against. Oh, before I do that, I'm sure there's other instances where you run into this problem where you have a low profile fixture that doesn't really allow you to properly get in with an Allen key to make the adjustments. So this is low tech solution to a high tech challenge. One more time. I simply drilled a hole in the end of that dowel. I cut the right angle off of the Allen key and then just, I didn't glue it in, I just, it's a slightly undersized hole, kind of tapped it in with a dead blow hammer and now it's easy peasy to adjust this thing. Again, low tech solution to a high tech challenge. So now I can get at these leggity split. We're going to pull this apart. So these Allen head fixtures actually push into these inserts and allow the whole thing to tilt. You can, I can remove this whole thing completely and that's the sort of bracket. Oh so, yeah, I know, I know, it looks a little rough, but uh, and it is a little rough. But we are going to clean this up first of all, and we will have to check the centers on this. Uh, Trevor had mentioned that he said, I may need to pull these out, fill them in, and re-drill to get them perfectly centered. But we'll see as we move along. So the next thing now is to set up to clean up this whole area and route that out. And I've got sort of a universal router plate for guitar stuff that I use for this type of job. Let me set up and we'll bring you in and show you exactly what we're doing. So we'll start by skimming this cavity. We can go a smidge deeper than that. Yeah, I'm happy with that for our final depth. Now we'll just clean up these two ends. In commemoration of the Stanley Cup, of course, we've got our our hockey pucks. Well, game three is tonight. You know where I'm going to be. Well, I think we're a little closer to the mark here, uh, Trev, you know, as far as your initial intentions go. It looks like we may have to pull those posts and shift things over a little bit. I did want to point out for all of you tech deck guys, I put an extra cinch hook on here to strap down the neck platform to act as a counterweight to hold this whole thing level while we did the routering. It's supported pretty solid by the top edge of the neck platform. The weight of the router, you know, I just wanted to, <laughs> a little bit of reassurance here. So if you need any more cinch hooks, get hold of Greg, he can send them out to you. Okay, we'll put this back together and see how it lines up now. This is the latest thing I guess from Floyd Rose. Pretty high tech. So the two critical movements of course are this movement here to make sure that it's back far enough 
and that's as far back as it goes right now. It looks like we may have to pull those posts and move them back further. Check that again. I'm going to start by bringing this back as far as it can go and see what we end up with as far as tolerances for the intonation. So this is my first time installing one of these things. Well, it looks like you're right, Trev, on shifting that over. Even though you got those holes drilled on perfect center to the bridge casting, the whole thing is a little bit too far this way. So you can see where it's running off here. So those two posts, I'll need to pull them, fill, and re-drill. Move it over about, looks like about two millimeters to get those strings to line up and the pickups to line up. As far as these pads that you put in, I think there's enough forgiveness there. The string length, I'll just double check that. So to the center of the 12 fret, we 12 and 7 sixteenths. I put my number one on the center of that 12 fret. And if I look here, 13 and 7 sixteenths brings us back. And we need to intonate, so no. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Here's a tip for all of you guys that are putting bridges on, because of course this is the million dollar question. The short answer is you need six millimeters of extra length past the theoretical length at the focal point on the bridge. So, so the simple way to do it, let's just, for the sake of math, let's say this is a 24 inch scale. So the distance from the leading edge of the nut to the center of the 12 fret would be 12 inches. And the theoretical distance from the center of the 12 fret to the bridge is also 12 inches. 12 and 12, 24. But the actual distance, the actual compensated distance, in most cases, you know, the Gibson uh, 24 and 5 eighth inch scale or the Fender 25 and a half inch scale, you want to go about 6 millimeters beyond the theoretical distance. Add six millimeters and three millimeters. Now if you do that you want to make sure that the travel distance of the saddle is right in the middle so you can, you can make it a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. If you do that six millimeters, three millimeters, 99 percent of the time you're going to be fine. Now with an acoustic guitar it's a completely different thing and I've covered that in other videos and I will cover it again. The problem here is twofold. This whole thing needs to move back about a quarter of an inch at least. These posts need to be pulled. I need to fill it re-drill it and move that over about two millimeters so we got lots of work to do on this one yet well of course we're using hockey pucks it's the Stanley Cup playoffs and yeah, we've got to put a bit of heat to this because uh, this has been super glued in or epoxied in Let's see if that'll do it for us it's pretty tight Well, the plot thickens. Of course, I had to pull that ground wire out for the uh, treble side bridge post before I fill and redrill. All right, treble side is done. That hole will need to be redrilled to feed that ground wire okay, through. We'll do the base side now. Here's another tip to remember when you're doing the final adjustment on these posts. So I got a good press fit for this uh, filler dowel. Now I'm marking this because there is a little bit of a taper. And you can save yourself a whole lot of grief by uh, getting that as close as you possibly can. Okay, so we'll take that out. So this is actually on a little bit of an angle. Okay, this is 24 hour aviation epoxy. This is for the plugs, the maple plugs we're putting in. So you want to make sure that you orient that plug so that cant is to the outside because it's a carved top, right? You want to try and get as close as you can. Ok, 
Okay, so that is the orientation that we want. Like so. Obviously you want to try and get it as close to dead flush as you can. I just use a sharpie there to blacken that. Of course that huge casting will pretty well cover everything you see here. Okay we'll come back in the morning and figure out the location of that bridge. Number one priority at this point is, is to line up the dead center of that slot for the six string with the straight edge, with the aluminum straight edge, and follow it all the way along the string path right to dead center of the six string magnet. And this pencil line right here picks up that trajectory of the string path so I'm going to do the same thing for the other side and all calculations will be based on the string path of the two outside strings, six, and now we're going to do the first string. So the bubble on that square lets me know that I am perpendicular to the straight edge. Now we can pull this all apart. Okay, so now that we've determined the string path of the first and the sixth string from the center of the nut slot to the middle of the bridge pickup, now we'll start doing some calculations. So once we connect these dots with the machinist rule, we have now established the trajectory of the first string and the sixth string. So all our calculations are going to be based on that. So I'm going up the center of the neck and at the 12th fret double that you got 62.7. So now as we work out the bridge placement the first thing we take into consideration is the theoretical distance. So this line here represents double the length from the nut to the center of the 12th fret. So this is our 62.7 centimeters or 627 millimeters if you will. So that's our theoretical distance. This is the trajectory of the sixth string. We add six millimeters of length from this point to this point. When we come over to the treble side, we add three millimeters of length from this point to this point. So I'll grab the bridge now and we'll explain the saddle orientation according to these points. So everything we're doing here is to determine the placement of the bridge for maximum intonation and adjustment. This bridge has two threaded indexing positions for each of the six saddles. Now for those of you that are following my channel you probably remember that Babbitt's bridge which actually had three threaded indexing positions for the saddles. Two is plenty, we'll be able to work with that. So what I've done is I have measured the distance from the focal point on the six string saddle to the front of the plate with my vernier calipers. It is 691 thou. So if you remember this was our theoretical distance of the scale length. Double the distance from the nut to the center of the 12th fret. That's where we ended up. But the actual distance or, or compensated distance we added six millimeters. Now what I was saying earlier is you want that six millimeters to fall on the saddle so that you have adjustment to be able to move this saddle back or move it forward. And that basically keeps you covered for different tunings and, and different string gauges. On the treble side or the first string we had three millimeters of compensation. On this saddle we want that one to be in the middle as well. So, and the measurement 
from the center of the first string to the edge of the plate is 576 thou. And you can see that this saddle is able to move forward or back. If we needed to, we could move it back and put it in this other hole. But I can tell you right now, this is going to be pretty darn close with the strings that uh, Trevor is using. I know it's kind of a long-winded thing, but this is the proper placements. This line right here represents the edge of the plate. So now when we put the plate here, that's going to give us the best possible case scenario for being able to adjust the intonation with whatever gauge of string and whatever tuning the customer chooses. I did spot that locate with a brad point bit. Next we need to have an access hole for the bridge ground. Well the bridge ground is installed, both posts are installed. Now, we'll be ready to install this Floyd Rose. So yeah, there's a few marks and stuff. Like I said earlier, kind of made a disclaimer. When I read in the instructions that a canal sometimes was needed for that spring-loaded push rod, I figured we'd be back. So I pulled the router plate out, and I had a sneaky suspicion I probably would go at it a second time. I think we're finally ready to string it up and start on the intonation process for the bridge, see how close we get. And this is going to have a compensated nut as well, just ahead of the locking bed. So let's get started. Well, this is moment of truth. This is what we got right out of the gate. The low E is 8 cents sharp. Lots of room for it to move back. The A string is 3 cents flat. I'll move that machine screw to the forward hole. The D is 1 cent flat. Lots of room to come forward. It'll just nudge that to thou. The G string is 10 cents flat. So very likely I will switch over to the forward threaded hole in the plate for that one. The B is already in the forward hole and there is lots of room to come forward to get rid of that 11 cents flat. Same thing with the high E, 4 cents flat, lots of room to move on that one. So we are definitely honed in as far as positioning the bridge where it needs to be. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make those adjustments and I'll come right back. So this is the wrap up on Trevor's Eastman guitar and the Floyd Rose FRX install. Very happy with this alignment. You can see that both strings just grace the outside magnets. So we've got equidistance there. Happy with that. And you can see that the distance from the outside of the bevel on the crown to the string is equidistance as well. So we got the alignment perfect. We went with a bridge pickup to get the trajectory of the strings sixth and first to line up perfectly with the edge of the fingerboard and those outside magnets on the bridge pickup. And another interesting observation is they did the PRS Taylor trick where they nipped off about a hundred and six thou or 2.6 millimeters off of the end of the fingerboard, move the nut forward so it's kind of like a pseudo compensated nut. And you'll see how accurate it is. All of these saddles are perfectly in tune now. As I mentioned earlier in the video, you want to be able to have room to move back or forward. And the fact that the end of the fingerboard was cut off, I did not pick up on that until I went to set up the intonation. So it's a good thing we left lots of extra travel. So these are 10 to 46 at concert pitch. Lots of room on each saddle to move both ways if necessary. I did hopscotch that uh, G-string saddle to the forward hole. So as it turns out, it's just the sixth string saddle where we use the rear threaded hole in the plate. Let's do our proverbial tuning test. You'll see how accurate this is. Here we go. Six string. admit it's actually a, a pretty nice looking guitar. The headstock is kind of somewhere between Epiphone and Gibson. This is part of the FRX package. This uh, locking nut mechanism and even that plate that goes on the face. That's metal as well. So there's our view from this end. There's one last look before we go into the studio and plug it in and uh, finally get to check this guitar out. We'll start by Just going through some chords. Just play through the chords of this loop, uh, B minor, A add 9, to D add 9, over F sharp, F major 7, E minor 9, C sharp minor 7 flat 5, to F7 sharp 5, back to B minor 7.
time. play. Thank you. 